We're good. All right, today we're gonna we're gonna talk about how to get immediate uh, immediate value from from APM, and uh, we've got maybe five ten minutes of slides. Uh, the rest is gonna be in product. We'll be in APM. Uh, we'll take a uh, look at insights a little bit, uh, and really we're gonna be uh, figuring out how to solve problems. Uh, before that, though, uh, we've got a safe harbor slide. Lots of text. Everyone internalize it uh, very quickly. We'll move on. Um, we also have a hands-on lab portion after lunch. And so as a part of this, uh, you've been added to a training account. Now, uh, because of this, other people may have access to your email address if you're uncomfortable with this. Uh, just let us know. We'll remove you from that account. But that's just that allows you to uh, work within the demo environment. So just let me know, uh, and we'll take you out of that. OK, we'll move on to the agenda. Uh, we're going to talk about how New Relic works at a very high level, uh, how we get data, how we transform that data into actionable information. Uh, we're going to talk about solving real problems with APM, the most efficient ways to dive from the overview uh, down into your transactional data, down into your, uh, your database uh, query data, and, and what to do with that. Um, and finally, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, troubleshooting and visibility with insights. Uh, in particular, how we've used insights to enhance capabilities of APM uh, and the rest of our products. Uh, we've been calling this analytics everywhere. Uh, another thing I want to mention uh, for Q&A and discussion, we have a Slack channel for that purpose. Uh, if you go to this URL, uh, tinyurl.com forward slash nru dash sign up, uh, that'll give you access to that Slack account. Uh, we've got one of our senior engineers, Jason Van Pelt. He'll be answering questions in that. And kind of think of this as like a, 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 an asynchronous training component uh, for today. So uh, if you have any like technical questions, any learning questions, uh, just jump into that Slack channel. Uh, we've got a channel, for, or excuse me, that Slack account. We have channels for all of the different tracks. Uh, and we'll be able to, to answer your questions uh, in that way. And it'll be, it, it's pretty efficient. So, Consider using that. Uh, and after lunch, we'll have a hands-on lab. Uh, we have some uh, demo accounts with real data, real applications uh, that you can try and apply uh, the skills that you've learned in this session after lunch. And so I'll be I'll be around to kind of facilitate uh, facilitate that, talk about some concepts, help you if you're in trouble, uh, if you're not really like uh, getting uh, how to uh, how to do particular things. Jason and I and some and some other helpers will. Uh, we'll be around to, to assist you with that. Um, so really, I want, I want you to come away with three things at, at the end of the session. I want you to be able to dig into uh, transaction details uh, to identify and resolve issues from the overview. So going from a high level view of your applications and diving down into uh, the specific segments that are, causing, that are causing problems. I want you to be able to quickly understand uh, an app's environment, an application's environment and context with service maps. And I want you to be able to leverage uh, insights integration in APM to solve and identify performance issues and, and also uh, try and enhance the user experience. OK? So let's talk about how New Relic works at a very high level. Uh, APM, one of our first products, if you were here for, for Darren's session in the beginning, he kind of talked about the history of New Relic, uh, what products we started with. And we started as a Ruby, Ruby monitoring, right? And so. Uh, New Relic kind of led the way into being a, a cloud-based platform. We've, we've been very, very heavy into, into SaaS. It's, it's been our, uh, definitely our, our MO the entire, the entire time. And so uh, in order to get your data to New Relic, along with your application code, you're going to deploy what we call the application agents. So the language agents, um, we have uh, different implementations for all of these different languages, .NET, Java, Node, PHP, Python, uh, Ruby, and Go, most recently. And the implementation details for each of these agents is a little bit different. But essentially, the agent is a component that's going to hook into your code at a low level, and it's going to add instrumentation. Uh, it's going to look for, for uh, timing, metrics. It's going to uh, identify error traces and database transactions. It's going to send. Uh, data to insights for you, and you're going to be able to, to, uh, to capture that data uh, and hopefully transform it into actionable information. So for many of these supported frameworks, you don't have to do anything except import the agent, 
Uh, and New Relic is going to figure out on its own the frameworks, methods, and classes that it needs to instrument. So for, for each of these languages, we, we support a variety of frameworks. And essentially, the agent is going to hook into to the, uh, to, to those classes and methods in addition to uh, some of the more like, fundamental aspects of, of each of these languages, networking libraries, things, things of that nature. So once the agent is installed, that data um, is getting aggregated. Uh, and it's sent up to our multi-tenant cloud um, <clears throat> about once per minute. Sorry, I need a little water. So we have a, we have a traditional one minute long uh, harvest cycle right now. Um, so we're providing near real-time monitoring of this data. It takes, it takes a minute or two for this data to get processed uh, and, uh, and come into the, to the UI. But essentially, uh, what we're doing is we're sending up these metrics. Uh, we're, we're giving you a little bit of extra info with unhandled exceptions and errors. Uh, we're giving you SQL calls and the text of the query. Um, and uh, all of this combined is going to help you debug and troubleshoot your applications. So what's going on here? Uh, well, we also support real user monitoring with the client side uh, with mobile and browser products. Uh, in, in the case of browser, we're going to be using a small amount of JavaScript that's uh, going to use your, uh, your browser's DOM performance API to measure, to measure page performance. That data is getting collected, sent back up to browser, very, very similar, similar way. So browser's functionality is going to, is going to give you an insight into uh, how long it takes for your page to load. Um, by the time it arrives to your user, it gives you a way to measure uh, the impact of CDNs, network transit time. Uh, and other factors that are going to impact your user's performance outside of your own application servers. And similarly, if you have a mobile application, you can add the New Relic agent on your mobile app, measure interaction times, and do crash analysis. And then here you are, right? When you log into New Relic through the browser or the mobile app, uh, it, it, it takes you to a user experience that, that takes your accumulated data and transforms it into information. That's, that's the most important part. We want, uh, we want to show you actionable uh, information. So and we do this through visualizations, uh, unified uh, uh, charting and graphing capability uh, that we try to make as accessible and user friendly as possible. So that's, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, we, do, we do three things distilled. Uh, we instrument your applications and your infrastructure. We process and measure data uh, coming from your business. And we turn that data into actionable information that you can use to uh, increase performance, uh, increase the user experience, and, and make your business more, more successful. And that's it for slides. We're going uh, to go directly into, uh, into the product now. So if I can get the static. I find myself rushing a little bit because <laughs> we're low on time. I want everyone to have a nice lunch. OK. Oh, you can, pull it, you can pull it back up. There we go. I just need to. There we go. OK. So this is, this is the APM overview. Uh, we're not going to talk about the installation of the various agents. The installation details for each of those agents is a little bit different. We're going to dive right into using the product. So we're going to presume that you have an application installed, uh, and we're going to go from the overview and dive into uh, your transactional data. So one thing I want to talk about really briefly, though, is, is the, the mindset that users are in when they're using New Relic, in particular new users. And we find that there's two basically distinct modes that, that you're in when, uh, when you're using New Relic. In the beginning, uh, you're either fighting a fire, so you're, you're in kind of like a reactive mindset. Um, you've got an emergency going on. You need to identify the performance problem, and that performance problem needs to be resolved as, as quickly as possible. So that's, that's kind of like a reactive mindset. Um, and then the next mindset is, is uh, looking for areas to optimize, so a proactive mindset. And it's difficult to get into a proactive mindset where you're constantly fighting fires. And so this is 
obviously the, the, the lesson of, of DevOps, uh, trying to reduce mean time to resolution with APM and insights. So you spend less time on unplanned work and, and, uh, uh, and firefighting and more time greasing the wheels of your business, improving performance, improving the user experience. And uh, we think APM does a great job of, of allowing you to do that, of, of facilitating that. So we'll dive into uh, APM uh, and look at the simplest ways to, to identify problems within your applications. So the first thing that I want to uh, talk about in terms of the UI is the time picker. Uh, you can find the time picker up here in the top, in the top left. And the time picker, to me, is, is probably the most important uh, UI feature, right? It controls, it controls the context for everything else that you see. Uh, it controls what data is coming in. Uh, and, and really, when you're, when you're assessing uh, problems, the first thing you should, you should be looking at is what, what, what time frame am I looking at? Am I, am I even looking at a problem? Did, did a problem occur during this time frame? Always double check and keep that kind of in the back of your mind. So with the time picker, you can uh, select a range of time uh, up to the present, ranging from 30 minutes to, to three months, uh, or you can add uh, a custom date uh, and select a specific time frame uh, using, these, using these options. So we're looking at uh, a demonstration application that we've built to, to show uh, some of the features of APM. And the, the primary chart that we're looking at here is the web transactions response time chart. And as you hover over the chart, uh, you'll notice you get a couple, you get some tool tips, uh, not only on the web transactions response time chart, but uh, contextual tool tips on the rest of the charts as well. So uh, when you select or hover over a specific point in time, you get that nice contextual data uh, in your AppDex score, which stands for Application Performance Index, uh, your throughput, uh, and, your, and your error rate. So all of that, all of that is kind of visible in one, in one glance. Um, so we kind of noticed that on this particular chart, if we're looking at the last 12 hours, this application has issues, right? Uh, that's that's pretty, pretty plain to see. And we can kind of tell immediately uh, at a high level where those issues are coming from. Uh, and we can see that primarily we're looking at uh, problems surrounding uh, our, MySQL, our MySQL calls here, right? So you can use these legend items to hide uh, or to add additional visibility to these charts. Uh, most, most of these charts have, uh, have clickable legend items. Uh, if you want to zoom in on a particular feature of the chart, you can actually simply just click in, zoom on the chart, and that'll take you to a specific time. So that's actually changing the time uh, context. So take a look at the, the time picker here. We've changed it from a 12-hour period to, to a two-hour period. So one of the first things that I, that I do um, is I go from this web transactions response time chart, and I try to get an understanding of, of how my application is performing overall. So I'll click on this drop-down box. And I'm looking at, right now, I'm looking at web and non-web transactions. I have a choice here. A web transaction is, is going to be any end-to-end uh, -end path through your code that begins with a request and ends with a response coming out of uh, that application server, right? So uh, these are applications that are either uh, talking directly to, uh, to a user or talking to another application. There's some kind of uh, server traffic happening there. And a non-web is going to be anything else, uh, cron jobs, background tasks, a database cleanup, things of that nature. So we differentiate between those. So for our web, uh, our web transactions, we also have the ability to look at percentiles. Uh, and this kind of gives us a sense of how our application is scaling for our users. Right? We can see that there's a, there's a difference between our median and average uh, percentiles and, and the performance for 99% uh, and 95% of our users. And so we can see here that 5% that of our users during this particular time frame are having a, a horrible experience. And so we want to we wanna figure out why. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to actually use the histogram chart. So whereas the web transaction response time chart is aggregated. It's taking all of the transactions that are coming in and kind of layering them. It's segmenting them. Uh, the histogram is going to look at those transactions and put them into time buckets. 
And so this is really going to give you a sense of how the various transactions within this service or within this, uh, uh, within this application is, is performing overall. And the really nice thing about this feature uh, is the ability to actually click on these individual buckets and identify specifically what transactions are problematic. And so I, <laughs> I've literally taken 15 seconds. I can go to, from my web transactions response time chart to my histogram, identify outlying transactions, and I can simply click on this transaction, and that'll take me to the transactions dashboard. And now I can begin to do a deeper investigation. It's that, it's that fast. So now we're at the uh, transactions dashboard, okay? Um, by default, it's gonna automatically sort your transactions by most, by most time consuming. And if you've clicked on a transaction from that overview page, it'll take you to uh, the specific details for that transaction. And that's what we're looking at here on the, on the right side here. Okay? So, uh, remember that a transaction is any end-to-end -end path through your code that begins with a request and ends with a response. Um, and these transactions are, are aggregated, but uh, you also have the ability to, uh, excuse me, <laughs> you're also able to, to look at a specific user's experience, uh, one specific uh, execution using transaction traces, okay? Uh, so when I'm looking at uh, my transactional details, I'm going to go look at my app performance, uh, see, how, uh, see how that transaction is, is segmented generally, right? So I have, uh, I have my uh, uh, response time chart here, I have a histogram, I have a percentile specific to this transaction, not the application uh, overall. And this is kind of giving me a sense for, for what specific segments are problematic, right? And so I can see here that this inventory service, this process order post, uh, segment is taking up a lot of time, and it's, and it's kind of doing it infrequently, right? Uh, I also have some issues here with my, my SQL order select statements and another, uh, another call I'm making over here with my uh, submit order segment. And if we scroll down, we can take a look at this breakdown table, and this gives us a textual representation of the chart we were just looking at. It breaks down uh, the category of each of the uh, component segments, um, it gives us how much time was spent overall uh, within this time window. Remember that uh, all of these numbers are uh, in the context of, of the time window. So we can see here that this external transaction, this specific segment is taking up 35.8% of all time being spent in this time window. Um, if we look at this average calls uh, column, that's gonna help us identify uh, looping issues uh, if we're making too many, too many calls within a particular function, uh, that's definitely gonna, gonna alert us to that issue. Um, so those are the types of performance problems you may be able to identify uh, using, using this uh, specific column. Um, in the case of external transactions, notice that this particular segment is a link, right? So this, if I click on this, this takes me to another application that I have monitored. Notice that the application changed. Now I'm looking at the inventory service. This service is connected to the order service that I was looking at. And so it kind of gives you the ability to go uh, across your applications, across your infrastructure, and tracing a problem uh, from service to service. This is hugely important uh, when we're trying to, to debug a service-oriented arch architecture, right? You, you don't have uh, one application controlling everything anymore. Uh, you have to think about your infrastructure and your applications in context. So uh, we have the ability to, uh, to get to other applications from there as well. I'm gonna go back and take a look at transaction traces. And so remember a transaction trace is one particular user's experience. And by default, uh, a transaction trace is going to uh, be taken when your AppDex F uh, barrier is reached. Barrier is not the right word, but I can't think of the right word right now. Threshold, thank you. Um, and AppDex F stands for AppDex 
frustrated. So AppDex is, uh, is a way we've come up with with a variety of, of other companies to, to try and quantify the user's experience, right? So it takes, it takes into account uh, a transaction's throughput. It takes into account uh, um, uh, the response time. And it, it gives you a pretty good measurement of, of how a user perceives that particular experience, that particular transaction. And a user in this case could be an actual customer, someone clicking on an add to cart function, uh, or it could be another service within your, within your architecture. Okay? So um, remember again that transaction traces are one user's experience. And one thing that I'm looking for here is that I'm looking for, for a difference between uh, my aggregated transactions and what's going on within one individual transaction. So that's going to enable you to identify those, those really tricky problems that don't occur every, every time. They're not, uh, they're not uh, happening every time that function is called. So that is going to help you identify those, those specific, uh, previously very, very tri tricky problems to troubleshoot. And that's really the first thing that I'm looking for. I'm trying to see if this summary generally matches what I'm, what I'm seeing uh, in the aggregated transaction summary. First thing I look for. Uh, again, you have your, uh, the categorization of each individual segment uh, within this transaction. You're looking at uh, the slowest components. Again, you have a direct link to other services within your architecture, and you can follow that, uh, follow that train throughout. Uh, in addition, you also have the ability to look at specific transaction attributes. And this actually gives you the ability uh, to, to tie application performance to, to real monetary value, right? So we have an item price here, an item quantity, an item total. This, this is a, maybe this is an a, a add to cart transaction that, that never really panned out. Um, you can add these attributes. You can add uh, user information, email addresses. Um, this is something that our, our support team does. We can identify uh, a specific user's experience down to the transactional level. So one thing that we might be able to do is uh, we can, uh, if we've assessed that, that there's been a, a big performance problem, very quickly we can identify exactly which, uh, which of our customers have experienced this, this problem. We can send them a message. We can send them a t-shirt or something, box of roses, whatever. So we can enhance the user's experience with our performance data. Next thing within transaction traces is this trace details tab. Uh, this gives you a stack trace of exactly what happened uh, and when it happened within this, within this transaction. Okay, so we have, uh, we have a very clear uh, Clear problem here within this inventory service. And this is, this is kind of a simplistic example for the purposes of, of the demonstration. But we can also go from here. We can go from here, follow the transaction trace to the external call that's being made, and we can go from, from here as well. Um, if the problem was manifesting within an, uh, uh, a database call, we can actually click on this drill down, get the query details. We can identify what database instance this call was made on. What was the database name? What was the, what was the query? Um, we also have the ability to look at uh, the full query and also an obfuscated query. But by default, uh, we're going to be showing you obfuscated queries. We're not going to be sending uh, attributes to New Relic. But you can change that with your configuration. OK? Also have a, a query analysis here for specific issues, and you have a stack trace for that, for that query. We also have the database queries tab. If you have a lot of queries happening within a single transaction, uh, the call count obviously is going to help you identify looping issues uh, within, within, these, within these segments. Um, you can click on uh, each, of these, each of these particular calls to get the query details and that can help you uh, troubleshoot those, those problems. Okay. So I'm going to look at another, I'm going to look at another example. Um, so just to, just to recap, 
We've gone from the overview. We've identified that we generally have a performance problem. We've drilled into uh, the specific problematic segment by using the histogram chart. Gone into the transactional details. Identified the problematic segment. Gone, th gone to that specific segment, and now we can identify within that segment what, what the problem is. So really, uh, it, can be a, it can be a two to three minute process to identify a performance issue. And that's your general firefighting workflow, right? But what if you're doing some optimization work? Um, what, if, what if you want to look at your application and find areas to improve? I'm going to move over to another application here, the e-com service. And I'm going to look at my, my transactions data. Actually, I'm going to go to the overview first. And the overview doesn't really tell me much in this instance, right? Remember that this is aggregated. Uh, it's taking all of the transactions within the service. And I, I, I can't really get a sense of, of what's happening here, right? It doesn't look like there's a particular, particular problem at all. Um, but something pops up in the web transactions histogram, right? We've got, we've got these transactions. Yeah, we, we kind of have a bimodal distribution here. Parts of the application are, are functioning differently from other parts. And we can kind of investigate that a little bit, right? But most of the activity is happening on the home page. Not, not really, not really a, a problematic. Uh, we have a pretty good aptX score. Everything's generally performing reasonably. However, if you sort, uh, if you go from sorting most time consuming to aptX most dissatisfying, we actually get a different picture. And we see here that the most dissatisfying parts of our application are the most important parts, the checkout the add to cart, the parts of our application that's actually making money, right? The home page, OK, that's, that's great. We, we have lots of throughput. We have uh, response time issues there, OK. But the most important part is our checkout and our add to cart. And that's not something we would have been able to find unless we had actually sorted by AppDex and had we been, uh, if, if we'd been using AppDex uh, correctly. So we see that 50% of all of our dissatisfied interactions are coming from these two services. And so that's one way uh, to, to identify areas that you can optimize and identify uh, overlooked segments within your services and within your applications. OK? And so when we click on this storefront, this checkout, we scroll down, we see in the breakdown table that we have another segment within another application, and we can go from there, right? Same, same process. We're able to optimize that way. So um, when, you're, when you're troubleshooting an application or if you're optimizing an application, think of it as uh, collecting symptoms. You're a medical professional. For your, for your digital medical professional, you collect symptoms, and you don't really want to make an assessment until you've collected all of your data, right? Um, collect as much data as you can before, before you start diving into your code. And, and one thing I recommend to everyone is always check error analytics. See if errors are associated with your transactions. And that's going to give you additional, uh, additional context. So I'm going to go back to the order service. And we'll talk a little bit about error analytics and how that can help you identify where in your applications uh, problems are occurring. And how to filter through things. So this is error analytics. This is part of our Analytics Everywhere um, initiative where we're taking the power of insights and applying it to all the rest of our products. It's an APM. You, you've seen it in browser. You've seen it uh, most recently and mobile. And so this is kind of the first iteration of this. Um, so we, we took all of our error data. We turned it into an insights, 
an insights object, send it to insights, and now we're actually pulling from insights internally to, to be able to uh, go through that uh, within APM itself. And so the first thing that I might want to do, um, I might want to see, I might look at my error rate, see my top five errors, but really, I want to see what transactions are responsible for those errors. And in this case, we see that 58, uh, 58 errors out of, out of, all, of the, all of the errors within this time context. Remember, again, everything that you see is within, within the time picker range. This is going to allow me to, to isolate those errors to specific transactions. And from there, I can do, I can do some additional inf investigation. I can go back and say, OK, so within the orders uh, transaction, what kind of HTTP response codes are we getting? We're getting all of the 500s. That's bad. OK. Maybe I want to isolate a specific error code, the 501s. What do the 501s look like? I can go down into my, into my error traces. No stack trace available for Of course there isn't. Um, again, this is, this is generated data. This is all fake, fake data. So in this case, we might, we might see things like this. Uh, <laughs> but in normal execution, you'd see, a, you'd see an error uh, code there. What if, what if I wanted to see if I'm an ops person? I want to see whether or not this error occurs across all of my hosts. I can filter by specific hosts. And so here you can see the, uh, the specific Docker containers that are running this application and running this, this transaction. Uh, in some cases, you might have problems that, that manifest only on one host. What if, what if we've identified these problems, we've solved it, and now maybe we want to send uh, a conciliatory note to our customers? Well, if we use a custom attribute with, say, a username, or an email address, I can actually get a list of all of the people, the individuals that have experienced this problem. Okay, and so I get a list of that here. I can say I, get, I can look at all Vincent's errors, and I can look at Vincent's error traces. Now, APM doesn't just intake uh, data from Insights. We also have the ability to create charts from APM. So in this case. If I've filtered by, by specific usernames, and I'm looking at the top, the top five errors, I can actually take this chart, click this View in Insights button, and that's going to take me to Insights. It's going to take that chart data, uh, uh, create the query, and create a new chart for me. And from here, I can actually manipulate this query a little bit. Um, I, can, I can change it from a time series chart here. I can erase that that option here, rerun it, <laughs> there we go. And now we have a list. We have a list that we can export for all of the users that have experienced this particular performance problem. I can export it as a CSV, I can get, I can get JSON data if I want to, and now we have, we have a way to take performance tie it specifically to the user's experience and help those users uh, stay with your product, right? We're, we're talking about customer success, making them uh, successful with, with whatever your application is. OK? So it's 12.15. Um, just to recap, we've taken a look at uh, uh, troubleshooting. Uh, we talked about reactive. Uh, application performance monitoring, per the difference between active and proactive, uh, using some of our data from APM, uh, transitioning to, to insights and solving uh, problems there. I also wanted to show you really quickly just an example of uh, a dashboard that you might be able to build pretty quickly. Um, so right here we have, uh, we have errors by application widget. This is giving us all the errors that are occurring within our applications, where it's coming from. Uh, I, can, I can select an individual application and get specific details. It'll filter the rest of my chart uh, for that. Um, I, can, I can further filter it by clicking on uh, a specific, 
Come on. <laughs> hmm. Doesn't want to use that filter right now. Uh, <laughs> normally, we can filter by, by transactional data. Um, but I highly recommend, instead of looking at just, just raw metrics, try to visualize your data in, in terms of time series. You want to see patterns and trends instead of bite-sized pieces of data. Um, the patterns are going to be more important, generally, generally speaking. So, so I'll, leave you, I'll leave you with that. Um, the last thing I'm going to mention is alerting. Um, we don't have time to cover it right now. But if you're not alerting, you're not really monitoring. Um, it's, New Relic then becomes just a diagnostic tool. So uh, try to integrate alerts into your, into your workflows. We'll talk about alerts uh, at one of my later sessions today at 3.15. Uh, we'll talk about key transactions, uh, uh, alerts, and uh, we'll dive a little bit deeper into Aptex, how Aptex, uh, uh, how Aptex uh, works and how you can set it correctly uh, to be able to accurately assess your application's performance and impact. So that's all I've got for now. Enjoy your lunch. Uh, thanks for attending. And uh, be sure to join us for the, for the workshop after lunch and get hands on.